Hey guys, what's up? I finally gathered 10 hidden JRPG gems for the Nintendo Switch. Now this is gonna be great, so stay put and let's begin! Number 10. Oninaki Since this is still fairly a new game released in August 2019, I understand it's not exactly hidden, however other RPGs quickly overshadow it and now it's already on its way to become one. In any case, it stays on number 10 for being the least hidden in the list. Developers Tokyo RPG Factory, same people behind the famous I Am Setsuna, also worked on this action RPG, dark story about a watcher called Kagachi in charge of protecting the cycle of reincarnation. To do this, he needs to kill demons and help spirits into the afterlife. A series of events occurred then that makes him start questioning everything, and therefore his journey begins. From an isometric view, sometimes top-down too, we control Kagachi in a hack-and-slash battle system. At the beginning, he will have a specific demon that materializes as a weapon to attack. As you advance in the game, he will be able to have more. What's interesting is that these demons have their own part of the story and character development. Oninaki is a hard game. Not brutally unforgiving, but it can get pretty challenging sometimes. Best way to treat it is a little bit like a Souls-like RPG where you'll need to seek the better angle or strategy to fight your enemies especially with the bosses. So, hidden gem or not, I think it's a very solid game that you need to play. Number 9. Nelke and the Legendary Alchemists This is a crossover from the Atelier series, with a new main cast and story. However, it has a lot of heroines and other characters from across the franchise. Now, it plays a little different from any other Atelier game, which made it gain a lot of criticism. Instead of moving around with your girl and taking quests, everything here is managed by menus, meaning you'll only select the actions of your characters during battle and pretty much anything else. There's a lot of micromanagement involved, because the game is about building a town, evolving into a city. Characters from other Atelier games will be in charge of shops, harvest fields and alchemy houses. Quests, also pending on a time limit, will mostly go around these transactions. Nelke is in charge of everything, so you'll be taking on her role to manage the entire game. Exploration in areas will be done with a party of five, with two guest Atelier girls in the back. And battles will be played in a very good turn-based system. During these explorations, gathering items will be performed by the characters, so overall, yeah, it is different from all the other titles in the franchise, but it's a crossover, so they had to come up with an alternative, right? In my opinion, they did a decent job. Number 8. Labyrinth of Refrain, Coven of Dusk This is a wacky game, a first-person dungeon crawler that's friendly for beginners. Although it does get hard eventually, it's not as hard as many other titles of this sub-genre. Story takes you to the adventures of the witch Dronia in a quest for exploring a very dangerous labyrinth. She has a mysterious book and, well, it may sound strange, but you, the player, are supposed to be it. So on to create generic characters with no personality but full of color, charm and of course fan service to do battles for you. The dungeons in this so-called labyrinth, I have to admit, are bouncing with energy and craziness. They're weird, sure, but visually stunning. Battles will be played in turns, like most of these kinds of games. Obviously your strategy will depend on the type of job or class you chose for your characters. As an NIS game, it definitely delivers what it has to, as it is a colorful game with a great comedy for a story. If this is your type of RPG, I strongly suggest you check it out. It can also work as an interesting entry for beginners looking at a challenge. Number 9. 
Number 7. Fairy Fencer F, Advent Dark Force. Here we have a good compile hard game that miraculously made it on the Switch. I guess its very small popularity earned it a place there, who knows. I don't need to explain the plot characteristics of the game of this company, you already know it's gonna be a feel with the usual anime tropes and some big sexy moments. As a comedy though, it works wonders, it truly made me laugh out loud several times. I guess the battle mechanics are what attracts most players to these types of games, as they are remarkably good. They play in turns, but you can move around in small areas to position your characters in convenient places. Then it's on to create combos and brutalize your enemies or suffer the consequences. In the end, I'd say it's like an improved version of most Neptunia games this company is known for. The game will rely on its story progress, although there will be some quests here and there. If you want to laugh and enjoy a cool turn-based combat, this is totally a great game to play. Don't expect too much though, as it is still a compiled hard RPG, nothing more, nothing less. Number 6. Mercenary Saga Chronicles Three indie RPGs that started off as mobile games, strongly influenced by the historically important Tactics Ogre. Soon the second and the third one were ported to the 3DS on a digital format. Apparently they made enough noise for Nintendo to allow a complete port of the trilogy on the Switch. Now on a physical version too. Now Tactics Ogre is a very, very hard strategy RPG. These three are like a watered-down version of it, but only in terms of difficulty. The balance is there, the engagement is still there, and so is the challenge. I like the stories on all three of them considering they involve the usual warfare drama and diplomatic treachery. All in all inside the lives of a group of mercenaries on each game. So you move in squares, in isometric maps, luring enemies, using skills and fighting your way through, just like in Tactics Ogre. But these mechanics play out so good that I understand why they are available on different platforms. So here are not only one, but three hidden JRPG gems in one single purchase. Give them a try if you can. Number 5. God Wars The Complete Legend Another greed-based strategy RPG, one that I know I've covered many times before in this channel. However, the Switch release is apparently the complete and definitive version of the game. This one includes all the DLC, a new dungeon that expands the story, and new playable characters. Story follows the arduous journey of a princess whose sister was sacrificed and whose mother is now missing. She's trying to find her through many different ordeals in the feudal Japan area, but with spiritism and mythology involved. You have a cast of some anime tropes and very suggestive characters joining her for many different reasons. Now, God War starts off like a perfect tactical RPG for beginners, but in reality, it's not. Even if you play on easy mode, you will start having problems after a few missions. This is because the game is unbalanced at times, but you know the drill, right? Grinding and strategizing will definitely solve most of the obstacles. So play any version of this game to try it out, or if you want to just go straight for it, don't forget the Switch release is the definitive one. Number 4. Code of Princess EX The remastered version of the original release on the 3DS follows the journey of Solange, an exiled princess out to clean her royal family's name during a war. However serious that sounds, trust me, it's mostly a comedy with funny bits and tits. Yeah, I just said that. Anyway, Code of Princess is an action RPG that plays like a side-scroller beat-em-up, but very technical. It's a tough game to master because of this, as you need to learn how to make proper combos and abuse skills, depending on the enemies you fight. You also need to move in layers to be in the same line as them so your attacks can land efficiently. This is a game with tons of playable characters, especially the Switch version which added even more. It also offers a two-player co-op mode offline, making it all the more fun. I covered this game very recently in my fourth Hidden Gem or Hidden Trash episode, so let's not prolong this little review. So that's all for the basics of this excellent game, time to move on to the next one. Number 5. 
Number 3. Lost Sphere Lost Sphere, not Sphere, it's a turn-based RPG also by Tokyo RPG Factory. It takes place in a world where entire towns and people are being swallowed by the mist. Your characters will have to save them by going inside their memories to restore everything and everyone. Beautiful story, beautiful visuals and beautiful music will be overly present here. It plays similar to I Am Setsuna, but here you can manually move your characters around. This is something you'll do to get a better precision and strategize your attacks and therefore the outcome of the battle. It can get really tough sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, but overall it's a pretty balanced game. Unfortunately, this amazing RPG sold nowhere near as good as I Am Setsuna did, perhaps due to the lack of Square Enix marketing. That's the reason why, even though receiving a positive welcome from critics, went under sea very quickly. Hence why it became a hidden gem in no time and one of the absolute best in this list. Number 2. The Alliance Alive HD Here we have another amazing remaster from a game originally released on the 3DS. I'm a big fan of Mr. Yoshitaka Murayama, creator of the Suikoden series. He wrote the script for this excellent turn-based RPG, so for me, it was a no-brainer to give it a try. I love the 3DS version and now I love the remaster as well. The Alliance Alive is a story that involves classism and racism. Races live under the oppression of the demons, which has obviously spawned rebellions across the world. United in an attempt to stop this, different characters, including some demons actually, join forces. The game has influence from the Saga series, which means your characters don't have levels, instead they gain different status on a random basis after battle. This will usually make you think the grinding was useless, but you also earn money and talent points, so it's quite the opposite. Even so, the game's very balanced most of the time, with only a couple of boss battles that are honestly unfair. In conclusion, this is a fantastic remaster for a brilliant game that pretty much defines the term hidden gem, in my opinion. Number 1. Land Greaser 1 and 2 These pair of strategy RPGs, originally released for the Mega Drive a long time ago, were remade for modern systems quite recently. However, back then we only got the first one called Warsong on the Sega Genesis, so this will be the very first time many gamers will be able to play an official English release of the second title. I'm a huge fan of CareerSoft, a defunct company absorbed by Atlus that created the Langreaser and Grow Lancer series too. I was anticipating this remake since I loved Warsong with a passion, even though it's brutally hard. Difficulty in this new version, I felt it was nowhere near as criminal, so I was happy to enjoy the new balance. Now, both games take on the same story, so the second one is a direct sequel to the first one. They revolve around a devastating war with a sinister invasion we see from the very first chapter of Lang Racer 1. I like that you can switch between the original artwork by famous artist Satori Urushihara or the remake versions of it. Lang Racer 1 and 2 are tactical RPGs on long grid based maps. Each commander can have small platoons of soldiers or mercenaries, some of them being around them, some on their own which the player controls. Battles impose a triangle of strengths and weaknesses similar to the Fire Emblem series. Most missions have a different objective, but they will be completed if you kill the main enemy commander. Doesn't sound too complicated, but don't underestimate this game. You need to learn certain things, such as having your small platoons around your commanders to enhance morale and damage. I love these two amazing RPGs with a passion, man. The remake of the gameplay was just spot on, even with its amazing rocking soundtrack. I'm so glad they were remade recently. Hopefully, this will help other obscure and underrated titles return to modern systems. Alright guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, I know that none of these games were exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, 
It's really hard nowadays to find something even remotely exclusive to each of the modern systems, right? But, you know, there's always the possibility of a part 2, so maybe someday I'll be back with more hidden JRPG gems for the Switch. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!